Hello there everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to capture a cabochon using beaded kumohimo, but then also how to add some embellishment to it. So this is what I have here, the embellishment along the edge of it. So I have done a captured cabochon with beaded kumohimo before, but I haven't done the embellishment on that one. So when I did that, I got the idea to actually do one with this embellishment around the edge. You just add something a little bit different to it. And you can see the sparkle that it gives as well, obviously depending on what you use. So this is what I'm going to show you how to do today. So if you want to learn how to do it, then keep watching. So these are then the materials that we'll need. Now first of all here we have a round disc because we're making a round Kumihimo braid. And then as for the specific cabochon that I'm using here, this is just a teardrop shaped agate cabochon, a nice blue colour there. This specific one measures 4 by 3 centimetres. So that's just what's going to fit perfectly with the braid that I've done, so the structure and the beads of the braid. Now, if you want to make it specifically like I've done, you're going to need a cabochon just like this, this measurements and the shape. But you can also use this technique for other cabochons and other sizes and shapes. But you're just going to have to adjust the beads on the braid a little bit according to fit that then. And then the cord that we'll need is this here. I'm using a 0.4mm Eslon. It's just going to work really nicely to make the structure of the braid itself and hold the beads that's going to make the braid as well. So this is the cord that I'm using for that and I'm just using this light blue colour that's going to match the beads that's going to be the main part of the braid as well. And then as for the beads, I've got some different ones here. First of all I have these 8O Miyugi seed beads. These are just the ones that I'm using for the main part of the braid both around the neck but also around the cabochon and these specific ones are matte aqua AB so they look like that I chose them just to go nicer with the colour scheme obviously you can choose whatever colours you want to like I said these are the main part of the braid then here I have some just super duos these are just some jet super duos so some nice black ones and then finally here I have some 15 O C seed beads so these are some really small ones we're going to use these after we made the braid to add in the embellishment and also capture the cabochon itself and finally up here, this is also for the embellishment, these are some 4mm bicones in a just a nice deep red colour. Again, I thought it would go nicer with the colour scheme. You can obviously use whatever colours you want to in any of your materials here to make it look just how you want to. And then this thread that I have here, this is an Eslon size D. So it's a very fine thread, pretty much like a sewing thread, but again it's quite strong as well. This one I'm going to use after I made the braid to add in the embellishment and also to capture the cabochon itself. Again, I'm just using a black colour because the majority of the beads of the ones I'm going to add in after are black. So I thought that would go nicest with that to not make it stand out too much in case you can see a little bit. Obviously you can make it match whatever beads and materials that you're using. And then we also need a beading needle here to be able to use that with the thread to add in the embellishments and also the capturing of the cabochon itself. So just a regular beading needle. And then the final few things that I have over here are some kumihimo ends. So we're going to use those to finish off the braid at the end. And then I have my findings, so an extender chain, my jump rings, and then just a loft or claw quest. Obviously you can finish off your braid and use whatever findings you want to. So let's get it all together and let's get started. So then in order to make the braid here, what we'll need is four lengths of our Eslon cord. And this is the Eslon cord that's meant for the braid, so the 0.4mm. But four lengths of about 280 centimeters each, so 2.8 meters each here. And what I've then done is folded them all over in half, so put all the ends together, fold them over, again put the ends together, and then I find where the middle is, roughly around there. Then I tie a regular overhand knot, just like that. And then around that I've just tied a scrap piece of wire. This is just to help symbolise the middle, but also help attach it to the disc. And the wire is just mainly to help pull it down through the discs while we're building the braid. You can then also use a kumuhima weight or whatever else you have. So I've then taken all my lengths of cord here and attached them onto my disc. And what I've done is I've taken the midpoint there where I had the knot, and then also the scrap piece of wire and put that down through the centre of the disc there. So it's sticking out of the back and that's where the braid is going to come out as well. Then I distributed the rest of the cords here. So a four lengths of cord has actually now turned into eight working lengths. So I put two around the top dot on each side and then two around the side dot there, two around the bottom dot and then two around the other side dot. So in this case I'm not really using the numbers at all. I'm just really using the dots there as reference points. So then to start making the braid, what we need to do is start with the top left one here. I'm going to release this from the disc, bring it over the middle, down and stay on the left side of the bottom pair, just like that. 
and then I'm going to take the bottom right one, bring that over the middle and up and stay on the right side of the top there. And that's one pair done. Then I'm going to turn my disc one quarter, so over to the next pair here that we haven't used yet. And it doesn't matter what direction you turn your disc in. But then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my top left one, release that, bring it over the middle, and then down, stay on the same side of the disc, so on the left here. Then I'm going to take the bottom right one and bring that up. And stay on the right side as well. And then I'm going to turn the disc again. And obviously, as you can see, we're working with quite long lengths because it is a necklace that we're making. So what you'll find is your cords can quite easily get tangled, especially if, you're not having, if you don't have them hanging loose underneath you. But what you could also do is use some Kamehameha bobbins if you want to, and then attach all your cords to them. It's going to help a lot, and also when we start adding beads into it. But this is just to show you then the technique of the braid itself. Take the top left one for the next pair, bring it down, stay on the left side, and then take the bottom right one, bring that up and stay on the right side. So you just keep going like this for a little bit. And what we want to achieve in this case is I want to create about one to two centimeters of braid here before we start adding in any beads at all. So keep doing that, just like I showed you, and then I'll get back to you. So I now kept going here and making my little section of braid. You'll start to be able to see it coming out on the back. So you start on the braid there. So now we're at this point and it's now time to start adding in the beads. So this is then how I set up all the beads and all my lengths of cord here. Now I've also taken a picture of this setup, so if you need to have a bit of a closer look I'm going to put that on my website and there's going to be a link in the description box below here so you can go and have a look at that. So then what I'm also just going to do is go through the setup here. So my next cord that I'm due to start with is my top left one because that's the way that I work with my cords here. So the first one that I'm going to go through is the top left one here. And in this case, on this one, you start out with having 68 eight O's, and then we'll get to the middle point here, where we have our super duos as well. Then what I have is eight super duos separated out with three eight O's in between each one. And then after the last super duo, we then finish off with 68 eight O's again. The right one on the top here, on this one we start out with 70 of our eight O's, all the way from the beginning. Then we'll go into the section with the super duos. I have seven super duos here, separated out by three eight-o's in between each of the super duos there. Then after the very last super duo, I again have 70 eight-o's at the end of the chord there. Then as for the top one on the right side here, what I have as well is 68 eight-o's to begin with. Then for the section of the super duos, again here we have eight super duos separated out by three eight O's in between each one. So this is just like the very first length of chord there. And again, we finish off with 68 eight O's after this section with the super duos. And then as for the bottom one here on the right side, as you can see, this one only has eight O's all the way throughout, so we don't have that middle section of the super duos. And on this one, we have 164 eight O's all the way. So now we go to the bottom right one here. On this one, we start out with 70 eight O's. And then we have the section with the super duos. We have seven super duos separated with three eight-o's in between each of them. And then after the section of super duos there, we then finish off with 70 of our eight-o's again. The bottom left chord down here, that one starts out with 68 of our eight-o's. And then for the section of super duos, we then have eight super duos on this one. That's then separated out with the three eight-o's in between. And then to finish off again, we have 68 eight O's as well. And then for the bottom card on the left side here, for this one we start out with 70 of our eight O's. Then we have the section with the super duos. We've got seven super duos separated with the three eight O's in between each one. And then we finish off after the section of super duos there with 78 O's again. And this was the last one with super duos on. Then as for the last card here, again you can see this has got no super duos, so that's just like the one down here. And this one also has 164 eight-o's all the way throughout. So like I said before, the next card that I'm due to take is my top left one here, because that's the one I used to create the beginning of the braid. It's just how I work naturally. And how you want to set up your beads, if you start the same way that I do here, so start with the top left one, it's the same way that I just showed you here. So that means if you start with the top left one or the bottom right one, you want to set up the beads the exact same way as here, because those two are the same. But then if you start with the top right one or the bottom left one, you'll need to set up your beads just a little bit differently. 
So for that, what you'd have to do is imagine that you have a mirror in front of your disc and then you'll need to set up all the beads here and all the lengths of cord in that mirror image. So just like that. So that means that, say for instance, the two top cords swap place. Obviously not the cords, but the positioning of the beads. The two bottom ones, the beads would swap over. And then as for the side ones here, the top one on each side would swap over the middle with each other. So the bead selection there. And then the bottom ones would also swap over the middle with each other. Again, just the positioning of the beads. So if you swap it over and use that mirror image, that accounts for if you work from the top right or the bottom left one. Because otherwise you won't quite achieve the same pattern and you won't be able to have that same effect of capturing the cabochon. And also it doesn't matter what direction you turn your disc in because it's just an 8 strand braid so you'll be able to see whether you turn your disc that direction or the opposite direction. You'll reach the same pair regardless what direction you turn your disc. So it doesn't matter what direction you turn the disc in so you don't have to worry about that. But then now that we have all the beads in place here on the cords, then it's time to continue the braid but then adding the beads into it as we go. So you just want to continue making the exact same braid that we were doing before, just where we're doing it with just the cord. So I'm going to take my top left one here, but then the difference is now, as I'm releasing the cord, I also want to grab the very first bead and then let that drop all the way down to the middle of the disc here, just one bead at a time. And then that's going to tuck in underneath all the cords in the middle. If it doesn't tuck in by itself, make sure you just tuck it in with your finger there. Then bring the cord down the exact same way as before. Then we take the bottom right one. And as we release the cord, I'm also going to let one bead drop down into the middle there. And then bring that up to the top. And then go to the next pair. And as you can see, this is just continuing the exact same braid as I showed you before. The only difference is now we're adding in the beads along the way. And that's what's going to build up that beaded section of the braid. So make sure you just drop down one bead at a time. And then this is going to start with the building. And after just a little while, you'll be able to see it on the other side. On the back side of the disc, your braid coming out with the beads. It gets a really nice effect. You just keep going like this all the way, also using the super doers, just add them into the braid the exact same way. What I also just want to say, it's a really good idea for this because it's a long length we're working with, because obviously it's a necklace. Using these bobbins are really handy. So right now I don't have kind of the space for that because I'm working on the desk here. But I'm going to be putting my cord onto these bobbins to make it just much easier to work with because otherwise you can see this will get really tangled really easily and quickly. So I do recommend working with the bobbins if you have them but otherwise just keep going like this until you use up all of your beads on all the lengths of cord here. Once you then kept braiding here and adding in all the beads, you don't have any more beads left on any of the cords, you have your braid coming out from the disc there down below, then it's time to just finish off this end as well. So at the other end, we just made a little section of the braid just with a cord. We want to do the exact same thing now, just to have something to finish off the braid with. So all you do is stop adding in the beads, but you continue with the same braid. And then what you'll find is the cord will naturally singe in here at the end and end up looking like the other end where we started out. So just do this again like the other end for about one to two centimeters, just so we have that little bit to finish it off with. So now that I have that little section there, what I want to do is just finish off the end, secure it so we can take this off of the disc. All I'm going to do is not go to the pair that I just did, but to the other pair that I'm due to take next. Then I want to release the cords that are sat opposite each other, diagonally opposite here. So these two, bring them across the middle, and then tie a regular knot over the middle there, and tie the knot down right at the end of the braid. And then I'm going to take the other cords that are the same pair, they're also diagonally opposite each other. Again, bring them across the middle, tie a regular knot, just like that, tie that down at the end, and then go to the other pair, cords that are diagonally, op diagonally opposite each other, tie your knot, and this is just basically to secure the end so we can take it off the disc but also without adding too much bulk to the end of the braid because we want to still be able to finish it off nicely. And then tie a knot with the last ones as well. So there we go. So now I can take the disc off and then here we'll have the full braid. 
that's now ready to keep working with. So then what I'm just going to do here is the end that we were working with of the braid. I just want to get rid of all this excess cord just because it can get a little bit in the way as we're going to capture the cabochon in that. So just to get rid of it. So all I want to do with that is just grab a bit of glue and I'm just using the glue that I'm going to use to finish off the end so add kumihi lens as well. And then I just take a toothpick here to apply it with. Just a little bit. And it's just to kind of secure those knots in place that we just did at the end of the braid so we can cut them off. And all I do is just go around with the glue right here at the end. Right around where all the cords are coming out from. Make sure you grab each one. So when we cut them off, the knots aren't going to come undone. So apply the glue, let it dry, and then you just cut off the excess. So now that we have the full braid ready here, and I've just gotten rid of the excess cords and the wire and the ends, then the next step is to then start capturing the cabochon here in the middle part where we have the super duos. So what we need to do is get a needle and thread ready. So I've got my beading needle, and then I've just added about an arm span length of thread onto it. Just a decent length to work with here. And then first of all, we need to attach this onto the braid. Now what I've also just done is put a little knot at the end there, just it's going to stop my thread from going through the braid completely. And then, to attach this, what I'm going to do is start on one side of this section of the super deuce. It doesn't really matter what side you start on, you can start from either side and then work the opposite way around. But I'm going to just start from this side and then just go a little bit above where the super deuce are. And then like to start from the inside of the braid. And first of all here we're just attaching this thread onto the braid. So you just want to go through it here and pull it all the way up and then the knot is going to just kind of slot in there and hide nicely. And then all you want to do is kind of go through the braid a few times before I start adding in any beads just to make it a bit more secure. So I'm going to just go a bit to the side in between the beads here. I'm not going through the beads, it's just through the braid. So just go a little bit back and forth through the braid here and then the thread will just nestle in between the beads there and hide nicely. So just do this a few times ending up down by your very first super duo. When you've then gone through it a few times you want to work your way down towards the first super duo, super duo there like I said and you just kind of choose one of the lines going around. But then what you want to do is make sure your needle comes out just below that last super duo so not above it there just below it, so basically in between the two first ones, but just coming out below that very first one. Pull it all the way through, and then what I'm going to do is first of all, I want to go through the super duo, but I want to go through the bottom hole first. So this is then the hole on the super duo that's actually incorporated into the braid. So I'm just going through that first. Obviously, there's cord in there already, but just bring your needle and your thread through all the way and then what I want to do is this is the point where I'm going to start coming the other way and start adding in beads that's going to capture the cabochon but I then want to come through the same super duo that I just came through the bottom hole I want to come through the other hole now so the outer hole that hasn't been used yet in the opposite direction and I just find that this starts it off a little bit better just like that so you're going to have a little bit of thread showing there, but that's the good thing as well, by then matching your thread to the beads that you're using. So we're now in the position where we're ready to start adding in all the beads that we need to capture the cabochon. So this is then where I bring in my 15 L seed beads. You want to pour out some of these, get them ready. So we can now go all the way around in between the super duos there. That's where we're going to add these first of all, just like that. And then we're in the correct position here coming out from that very first super duo. So what we need to do first of all is, obviously I'm just going to do the counts here that's going to fit my project, so my materials and also the cabochon. If you've done a different shape or size of cabochon, you might need to adjust the amount of beads that we put in between the super duos here. We can always kind of experiment with that and figure that out as you go. So the very first one up here, what we need to do is add five of our seed beads. So I have four there. 
and a five. And then what I do is just jump straight over to the next one, so the one below it. And obviously in the open hole that's pointing outwards, so not the hole that's part of the braid, but the one that hasn't been used yet. Pull it all the way through. Just like that. Then obviously making sure the thread doesn't get caught. Now there we go. Now there's no need to pull this particularly tight just yet. So I'm just going to go all the way around doing the beads here before I pull anything too tight because it's just going to keep opening up anyway. So the next one again, I'm also going to be adding five seed beads. So I've got five there. Jump to the next super duo in the same line that we're going all the way around. So the ones that are straight below each other. And there we go. That's the first two ones, the first two gaps there that we've done. And then we need to start adjusting how many of the seed beads we put in between the super duos because it's a different amount it needs because up here the gap is going to be wider between the super duos whereas down here it's going to become a little bit tighter. So we want to start taking the amount of seed beads that we're using down. So in this next gap I'm going to add four instead of five of my seed beads and then jump straight over to the next super duo like that and the next one again we take four so this is kind of going around the side of the cabochon now if you can imagine that jump to the next super duo And you can start to see the idea of it coming together, how it's going to end up holding the cabochon in place. And the next gap, again, we're using four for that as well. Jump straight to the next super duo. And also you'll be able to see we're slowly starting to get to that middle point down here. And for the next gap before we get there, I'm also going to be doing four seed beads for this. I've got my four, jump to the next super duo in the open hole that hasn't been used and then the next gap is the last gap before the midpoint here you'll be able to see there and on this side obviously we're going to do all the same things symmetrically just in the other direction so this very last little one down here before the midpoint I'm only going to add three of my seed beads because that's kind of going to be the smallest gap Go through it like that, and this that particular super duo is the very middle one. So that means now we're going to move to the other side, and like I said, it's all going to be mirrored. But instead of kind of downgrading, downsizing the amount of seed beads, we're going to be adding seed beads instead. So the very first one is going to be the same as the last one I added here. So that means I'm going to add three, and then jump through to the next super duo. So there we go, we're now past the midpoint. And then as you'll be able to see, I'm just going to then tell you, the next four, we need to add four seed beads in between each super duo, just like we did on this side. And the last two, you need to add the five seed beads. And then once you go through the last super duo up here, so go through and do all those, then I'll tell you how we do the top part there as well. So now that I've reached the top here on that side, then we have this gap across the middle that we also need to fill as well. And for that, we then need to use a super duo as well. So I'm just going to bring one of those in. And I'm going to take three of my seed beads here, first of all. Then I'm going to take my super duo. And then add another three seed beads. So the super duo ends up in the middle of all the seed beads there. And then what I'm going to do is jump from this side straight over to the other side and go through the first super duo again, so the top hole that we've already gone through. And then now, what we want to do before we then start capturing anything as well, I want to go through all these beads again to add more strength and security to them. So you might as well just go through as many of the seed beads and super duos as you can in one go. Obviously making sure you catch all the seed beads, don't miss any out. So I've gone through all those and then pull it all the way through 
and you'll see that those extra seed beads with the extra super duo up there is going to sit and bridge that gap just nicely and then again you don't have to pull it tight just yet it might do that automatically anyway but you want to go through all of these beads all the way around one more time like I said just to add that extra security so go all the way back up and also bridge the gap because obviously they're kind of extra seed beads you've added in you want to make sure that they also get that extra security as well so now that I've gone all the way around again here so I make sure that I have two threads running through all these seed beads and super duos then where I've ended up is through the very first super duo again so you want to make sure to go through that because then what we need to do is work our way back out from this and back up towards this area up here on the actual braids so make sure now that all these beads you keep hold of that and then you pull it tight so make sure it's nice and tight now so on this super duo, I'm just coming out only from the super duo there what I want to do is the same thing that we did when we started out I want to go down through the bottom hole now in the super duo to finish it off that hole that's then actually part of the braid so just make your way through that it can be a little bit tight obviously because of the cord And the needles kind of get entangled there but with the cord but just make your way through just like that and then pull your thread all the way through and then what I just like to do before I completely pull it through is kind of keep hold of this loop on this side and before I fully tighten it I just want to tug on this part of the thread that's coming from the top of the super glue first just to make sure it's nice and tight and then I pull through the rest. So there we go. That's now one side with through all the super duos there that's going to be captured with the cabochon. Now I'm going to go back through the braid again. I'm coming out from the super duo. I just want to go through the braid a couple of times. That just helps secure all this in place as well. And also, like I said, we need to then get into position to move up to this area up here. So we just go through the braid a couple of times but then end up down here just a little bit above that very first super duo. So now that I've gone through the braid here a few times I've made sure that my thread is now coming out right down here a bit above that very first super duo but I want to make sure that I kind of look at my braid a little bit so I'm now going to be using my braid and adding some more of the 8O's to this area to kind of fasten it together. So what I want to do is find the bead that I think is suitable and come out below that bead because then actually the bead in the braid there because what I want to do is then go through that bead with the thread just that single bead and pull it all the way through because this is then the beginning of making that section here it's going to help keep and hold it all more together so now what we need to do as well is add in some more of the 8O's so the same ones that I used in the braid so I'm just going to get some of those ready there we go and then this part now I'm going to show you and tell you what I do but it's also more kind of working it as according to what suits your braid here because it's just doing it as you go really I'm going to pick up one of my beads the 8O's and then you'll find in your braid you kind of got these little gaps a little bit so what I'm going to do is jump from the bead that I'm coming out from I feel like I have a little gap here that I can fill in with a new bead then I'm going to jump over to the next bead in the braid after that gap pull it all the way through and then that bead is going to sit right there in that little gap and fill it in but obviously you can see it does stick out from the braid but that's also what we actually want because I want to build up a little, you can almost say a little bridge here that's going to go from this side of the braid crossing over this little open space and then connecting to the other side of the braid there so just above where the cabochon is going to sit and that, like I said it's all really doing it as you go and seeing and feeling how you look on, how you think it looks on yours I'm going to pick up another one jump to the next bead in the braid to fill in the next gap because these beads that we add into the braid are then beads we're adding we can then use to go back through and then add some more beads through them 
like that. You can see they sit there just nicely. So I also want to make sure I don't want to go up too high because I just want a little section here just above where I don't want to be adding too many beads either. Then when I'm here, I kind of don't want to go any further up and I don't really have anywhere else to go. So all I'm going to do is go back through the braid again. So when you're kind of in a place you don't really have any way you can go, just go through the braid and use the braid itself to reposition your needle and thread. Then decide where I want to come out from now, where I want to add in my next beads. And you just go through the braid to do that. Coming through here, I maybe want to come out above the last bead that I just added. Making sure I go through the actual braid itself, obviously. Like that. And then you can come back down through the same bead if you want to. And like I said, there's not really anything specific to this that you have to do. It's just doing it as you go and seeing what you think fits nicely in yours. Can then pick up another bead and then feel like if I can fill in this gap here. And you can also try one, see how you think it looks. And if you then think that doesn't look quite right, you can always take your needle back out and reposition it. So maybe for that one, I could actually add two beads to fill in that gap. So it's just really trial and error and building it as you go. Something like that. So just keep doing this for a little bit, adding this a little section of beads that's going to end up then being able to connect over to the other side. So I then kept on adding some beads here as you can see and it's now getting to the point where I'm almost reaching the other side. So now that I want to actually start connecting them, I'm adding another bead and then you want to then have a look and see where it's going to fit and then start connecting the two sides together. So like I said, just do this as you go. And now I'm on that side. What I just want to do is to get that bead properly in position, just go through the braid. Just to get my needle repositioned here. Like I said, that's what you can always do to get your thread and needle in the right position that's going to suit the next step you want to take it's just use the braid and go through that so like this go back through the same bead and up through the one that I added just to get it to sit properly and then also jump up through the next one in the braid because that's basically how we started off on the other side So something a bit more like that. So now the two sides are technically connected. All I want to do now is keep going. So you want to fill in the rest of the gap as well to create that little bridge. And then also, once you've filled in enough here, I'm just going to show you, we're also going to need to remember to just use the other hole in this extra super duo that we added in. So keep filling in this little space and then I'll show you how I do that. So I now completely connected both sides here, then all that's left to do on this side is we still have this super duo at the very top that we added in when we went around, that's still loose on one side, so that's what we want to connect now as well. So right now I'm kind of coming out here in the middle of all the beads that I've connected the two sides with, and what I want to do is kind of come down the side a little bit, it doesn't matter what side, just go through your beads until you're in the right place. like this and then I can see when I bring my super duo up this fits really nicely to be able to go through the open hole that we haven't used yet but I'm just going to add in one more bead so I take another one of my Eidos that's in the braid then I go through the super duo with the open hole there because this is just to capture that completely in place and make that nice and secure as well all the way through so we'll come out on the other side and then on the other side I also want to just add another one of the beads and then go through the equivalent bead on this side just like this pull all the way through and then when they fall in place that's going to then kind of secure that super duo in place as well and help pull it up a little bit and also just so it doesn't flap around obviously 
So what I want to do now is actually just go through this a few times because right now there's only one thread through the super duo there. So all you want to do is just kind of go through some beads, come back down, go through again, just to make sure to make this really nice and secure as well. So do that, and then I'm going to move on to the next step. Now that I then reinforced this area here, we're done with this side that's going to capture the cavachon and also connect the two sides of the braid. So what I'm going to do is right here where my thread is coming out from, I'm going to go back through the braid again, because I want to then start getting to the other side. And again, just like on this side, we want to come out by the very first super duo. And like I said, it doesn't matter what side you start from. So whether you're on this side, that's opposite to before, or whether you end up on the other side, it doesn't matter at all. I'm going to go through here, the braid itself, and come out below the first super duo, regardless what side you're on. Just like we did before. Pull it all the way through. And then... You want to get into position first of all, so go through the bottom hole, the one that's in the braid of the Super Duo. It's getting tangled a bit, there we go. So bring it this way through the Super Duo first of all. Just got a little knot there. There we go. And then this is just so we can get back through the Super Duo in the open hole, just like that. And now we're ready to add beads on this side as well. So all you want to do here is the exact same thing that I showed on the other side. So start from that side of the Super Duo that we're at, add on your little seed beads, jump over to the next one. And then on this side, what you want to do, the one that I've already done here, that's the front. The one that we're going to do now, that's going to be the back side. And the base is here, it's pretty much the same. Obviously, if you're using different materials or different cabochon, you're going to have to customize it to yours. But for mine here, it's going to be the same all the way around, the amount of beads that we need to add in between, except for the very top. But just add the same all the way around like I did on the front side here. You can go back and have a look if you need to. Or just add the ones that's going to suit yours. And then when we get to the top, I'll just show you the slight difference. So now to come all the way around to the other side here, we then have this little gap that we need to bridge, just like we did on the other side. The difference here is I'm going to just use a slightly different amount of beads. So I'm going to take four of my seed beads, like that, just the same ones that we used throughout here. Then I'm going to take a super duo, and then another four seed beads. And again, if you're using some different materials, so say a different cabochon, so different counts of everything, just customize it to whatever you need. And then I'm going to jump from this super duo that I'm coming out of back to the very first one through the top hole. And then straight away, just start going through all the beads again. Because this is where you want to go through everything you've just done all the way around here to reinforce the whole thing, make it stronger. So just do that all the way around. And now I made it all the way back around again here, so I've gone through all these beads twice now. Remember to also make sure you go through the top part, so the little bridge there, once more. And then I've gone back through the very first Super Duo again in the top hole. So before we do anything else now, we obviously need to capture the actual cabochon, because if you tighten this now, beforehand, we won't be able to then get it in. So before we tighten it and then kind of move on, I just want to get the cabochon in place, like that. And then we just need to pull this a little bit. So pull at the thread to make sure it tightens nicely around the cabochon. And then you'll be able to see as well it captures nicely from the front and the back. So it's going to sit like this. And then we basically need to move on from here now. So I'm coming out of that very first super duo. All you need to do is go back down through the other hole, the same super duo. So this is again the one that's in the braid. come all the way through, bring your thread through as well and again before I just completely pull it through I like to just leave a little loop here to then just make sure that I have completely tightened all the way around the cabochon here before I then pull this through because it can then be a little bit hard to do it otherwise 
just tighten that and then pull it through so that little loop leaving that before you pull it all the way through the super just helps with that so there we go and then if you feel that like you're happy with that and it seems like it's capturing nicely and you can just test it out it's not going to fall out or anything then the caption is in there securely now what we need to do now is then on this side repeat what we did on this side here at the top so just connect the two sides of the braid exactly like here on the back because you can see there's a little gap here so we've done it on the one side but we need to do it on the back as well and then also incorporate that super duo right at the top so the exact same thing that I just showed you here you want to then repeat that now so do that and then once you've done that we're going to get into a position close to one of the sides here of the super duo that's sticking out all the way around and then we need to add in the embellishment so now we've finished the whole main part here so obviously the cavation is captured in place from both sides and then what we want to do is the thread we want to come out on one of the sides again it doesn't matter which side so what we have left to do now is just add the embellishment with the super duos here on the outer edge that we haven't used yet the outer hole of them anyway so what I'm going to do is make sure my thread is coming through the braid out towards one of the sides and also what you want to make sure to do is just leave a bit of space so you don't want to come out right by the first super duo there you want to come out so you have a bit of space in between but then I've come through a bead as well so you kind of want to come out through a bead that's straight across from the super duo when you look at it here but you also have some space in between because then what we need to do is start adding in the embellishments so for that I'm going to be using again the 15 or seed beads here to get the spacing right as well to help with that but then the actual embellishment itself is going to be these 4mm bicones and I've just got this nice red colour to go with the colour scheme here so these are the beads we'll be using and now we need to add them here on the outside edge so to begin with here and again this also depends if you're using different materials or so different cabochon so you made the braid a bit differently it might have a bit of a different shape so you can customise it to work with whatever cabochon that you've got here but for this one what I'm going to be doing is the very first space so the bead that I'm coming out from in the braid I want to add one of my 15 O's, one of my 4mm bicones, and then another 15 O. And that's going to fit right up here because what I'm going to do is coming out from that bead in the braid and I'm going to go through the open hole on the very first super duo there. Pull it all the way through and you can see that's going to sit just like that and add some embellishment right at the top. So this is the beginning of it. Then we need to move on. Again, one 15 O one bicone and one fifteen o. this is the next one jump from that super duo over to the next one in the open hole again that we haven't used yet like that the next one again is the same so one fifteen o, one bicone and one fifteen o. jump through to the next one next super duo in the braid there So there we go, that's the first three little spaces we've filled in. So the next one is where it's going to start being a little bit different. For this one I'm going to add 115 0 first of all. Because what you'll be able to see the spacing between the super duos, it's a little bit different throughout. Up here you have a bit less space than say down here, it's a bit wider. So I'm going to add 115 0 one 4mm bicone and then I'm going to add two 15 0s after the bicone just because there's a little bit more space in the next one here jump through to the next super duo you can see that fits there nicely and now we're going to step up again so we're going to use two 15 O's first of all then the bicone and then again another two 15 O's just like that jump to the next super duo on the outer edge there we go, working our way all the way down and we're kind of slowly working our way to the midpoint down here but we're then obviously just going to come back up the other side so again two 15 O's, one bicone and then another two 15 O's, so the same thing that we just did jump to the next one now around here the bottom they're all going to be pretty much the same spacing so we're just going to continue with this for now 
with its two 15 O's, one bag cone, and again two 15 O's. And jump to the next super duo. And there we go, you can see it fits just perfectly around and gives a really nice embellishment. So we only have one left to reach the midpoint. And that's going to be exactly the same. So two 15 O's, one bag cone, and then two 15 O's again. And then jump to the very middle one. The very next super duo there. You can see we have this nice embellishment, and this is basically halfway around. So now that I've gone through all this, what you'll be able to see is you're going to be doing exactly the same thing on the other side, except in a reverse order. So you want to then the next one is the first one for the next half. That's going to be the equivalent to the last one for this half that we just did. So it's going to be two 15 O's, one back on and two 15 O's, working your way all the way up to the other side here, which is going to be equivalent to the other side as well. So just mirror this side to the one that we just did until we end up all the way up here again you want to then finish the very last embellishment there go in to a bead in the braid itself that's straight across from the super duo but we have enough space to fill in the same amount of beads as that side so do that all the way around so I now made it all the way around to the other side here so what I'm going to do now is I'm coming through that bead in the braid so what I just want to do, before we then finish anything off, just like everything else that we've done, I want to be able to go through and reinforce this. So I'm going to go through the braid here, to the other side, and I'm just going to stick on this side instead of trying to make my way over to the other side. A bit easier, I think. I'm going to go through a bead here, just to also make sure to hide the thread. Because obviously, especially this is a black thread, whereas the beads and the cord in the braid is the light blue. So I don't want the thread to be seen too much, really, if at all, ideally. Come back through again. So what I'm doing now is just basically repositioning the cord here, or the thread rather. Because what I want to end up doing, plus it also just secures it a bit in place. I actually then want to end up back down where the embellishment ends there. I'm just going to slowly work my way down, go through again. And again through a bead here. And then just one final time through the braid to then make your way to get out to the right place. So I'm going to get out right in front of the very bead that I went through in the braid where the embellishment is attached to and I'm going to go back through that again. So because I've gone through the braid a few times and some of the beads, you can go through the same bead that you came through before in the opposite direction without the thread coming undone because we secured it in the actual braid itself. I'm going to go through that and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to go through all this embellishment again. Just like the reason for doing it all the other times, it's just to give it extra strength. So you just want to start going through the beads again, a few at a time, as many as you can. Make sure to not skip any, because then obviously the thread's going to be visible. Just go through your beads here. Pull that all the way through and then just keep going back all the way around to the other side again. And I'm just doing this for extra reinforcement because you want obviously the piece to be as secure as possible, also ready and easy to wear without worrying too much about it. So do that all the way to the other side and then all the stuff to do really is get rid of the thread on the other side here. So tie it off by going through the braid a few times and then tie a few knots, go through the braid again and then you can cut it down. And then once you've done that, you'll have the main piece done. So once you've then gotten rid of your thread here, you have your main piece done. So all that's left to do now is actually then finish off the ends of the Kamehameha braids themselves. So you can see here, all I'm going to use for that are these actual Kamehameha ends shaped like little bells. So I'm just going to use some glue. I have a tutorial already that shows how to do this. So using these Kamehameha ends to finish off your Kamehameha braids. So I'll put a link to that in the description box below. But then once you've done that, you'll have your finished piece.
So once you then added your kumihi ones here and your findings as well, and obviously let the glue dry, then you'll have your finished piece and it's ready to wear. So this is what it looks like. So the whole thing is one connected piece with a braid. That's actually the necklace, but then also the part that captures the cabochon there goes all the way around. And then we just have this embellishment around the edge as well. So this is what it looks like. So you can obviously make it however you want to, choose whatever colours you want to. And also use the technique for other shapes and sizes of cabochons and just experiment with that. But then this is what it looks like. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching. Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this frozen inspired beaded kumahimo bracelet. And this is what it looks like. So I have a blue background with a mixture of two different blue tones, so a darker blue and then a mid-tone blue to give it a bit of depth to the back. And then I have these little, now they can be a few different things, you can have them either be snowflakes or they can be stars or frozen flowers. So it's completely up to you what you want them to be.